click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends and today's numerical is different basically in today's numerical we have two combination we have a combination of two different functions combination simply it may be at a multiplication or it may be a addition or subtraction so first of all in next two videos a current one and in next video i'm going to place a combination of different signals in today's video i'm going i have placed a combination or you can say i have placed subtraction between a two function so first of all let's go through the question first a problem number 4 perform convolution of x1 of t and x2 of t using convolution theorem of laplace transform this is the question whereas the function is x1 of t now this function is basically a subtraction between a two functions u of t and delayed unit shift which is delayed by one now and the second function is x2 of t and it is also a subtraction between a two unit shift function whereas second function is delayed by two now to find out the convolution, we will go through the solution first. Our question is, we have to perform convolution between x1 of t and x2 of t. Where is my x1 of t is combination or you can say subtraction between unit step and delayed unit step. And x2 of t is similar. It is a subtraction between unit step and delayed unit step. Whereas first, my first function is delayed by 1 and the second function is delayed by 2. Now, what we are going to do, we have to perform a convolution. So, first of all, we will write the definition of convolution theorem. According to convolution theorem, a Laplace transform of convolution between two signals, that is convolution between x1 of t and x2 of t is, this is the sign of convolution now if we take the laplace transform of convolution between two signal then it is a product of a laplace transform of both the individual signals so what i said it is a product of a laplace transform of two individual signals or a two signal that we are going to find out a laplace transform separately so laplace transform of x1 of t is represented by x1 of s and x2 of t is represented by x2 of s and let's say this is my equation number one now what i'm going to do i'm going to find out a laplace transform of x1 of s first so laplace transform of x1 of t is nothing but laplace transform of x1 of t is nothing but x1 of s and what is the function where x1 of t is actually it is a subtraction between unit step and delayed unit step so according to linearity property we can find out the laplace transform of both the functions separately According to linearity property, we can obtain the Laplace transform of both the functions separately. That is, x1 of s is nothing but Laplace transform of u of t minus Laplace transform of u of t, which is delayed by 1. Now we know that the Laplace transform of u of t is 1 by s. You have solved this u of t value, which is 1 by s in previous videos. So just go through it now. Next, a Laplace transform of u of t minus 1. First of all, this function is delayed by one, minus 1. So, what I said, uh, as I told you in earlier videos also, just multiply this s value, which is in power of exponential. Just multiply this s value with a delayed value, with a sign. So, delayed value is minus 1. So, multiply s into minus 1. Answer is minus s into Laplace transform of input function, which is u of t. And the u of t Laplace transform we have already solved, which is 1 by s. Means what? Our answer is, if I take 1 by s common, or you can say, if I take s common in the denominator, then we have 1 minus 
e to the power minus s whole divided by s and this is my x1 of s and i'll say this is my equation number 2 now similarly we'll find out a laplace transform of x2 of t So, Laplace transform of x2 of t is nothing but x2 of s and it is nothing but again Laplace transform of u of t minus u of t minus 1. Again, if I use a linearity property, so we can obtain the Laplace transform separately. So, what I am going to write is x2 of s is nothing but I am going to separate the Laplace transform or you can say I am going to apply Laplace transform on both the functions separately. Now, what is the Laplace transform of u of t? It is 1 by s, of course. But what about Laplace transform of u of t minus 2? So, let's see the solution of the Laplace transform of u of t minus 2. Basically, it is similar to this one. I will tell you what is the similarity and what is the difference between them. We know that Laplace transform of u of t is again 1 by s. That I am going to write down over here. Minus the delayed function u of t minus 2. Again, whenever a function is delayed, then of course we will use a time shifting property and according to time shifting property, just multiply s value with a delayed value. Now, unit shift function was delayed by minus 2. Means what? I am going to multiply minus 2 with the power of s. Power s. That is e to the power s. This value is multiplied by that delayed value. That delayed value is minus 2. So, s into minus 2 becomes minus of e to the power 2s into Laplace transform of input signal. Now that input signal was u of t. The question was u of t minus u of t minus 2. The u of t calculation I have already solved. Now move on to next u of t minus 2. This t minus 2 is already solved whereas in that unit step function is given. So Laplace transform unit step function is 1 by s. So again here also if I take s common in the denominator then what I will get? 1 minus e to the power minus 2s and this is my x2 of s and this will be my equation number 3. Now just substitute equation number 2 and 3 in equation number 1. What you will get? If I substitute equation 2 and 3 in equation number 1 then a Laplace transform of a convolution between two functions that is x1 of 2 and x2 of t becomes the result of x1 of s is that we have solved the result of x1 of s was 1 minus e to the power minus s whole divided by s and the result of x2 of t that is Laplace transform x2 of t which is already solved now look at here here also we can multiply numerators separately whereas denominators also multiply with each other. Now if we multiply numerators then what we will get? 1 into 1 becomes 1. 1 minus of e to the power minus 2s becomes e to the power minus 2s. Again now we will multiply this minus e to the power minus s with 1. Answer is this now multiply minus s e to the power minus s with minus e to the power minus 2s now minus minus becomes plus and if the bases are same i'll show you e to the power minus s into e to the power minus 2s whole divided by s square now what you will get if the bases are same then orders always get added so minus s plus minus 2s becomes minus 3s so what i'm going to write 1 minus e to the power minus s minus e to the power minus 2s minus e to the power it's not a minus it is plus 3s whole divided by s square and this is our solution of this question so this is all about a uh, convolution theorem Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe Ikeda for further more videos. Thank you so much.